In this last section, we're going to learn about how temperature relates to the rate of a reaction. We've previously seen that an increase in temperature leads to an increase in the rate of a reaction. In the example below, well, let's consider two different temperatures, T2 and T1, where T2 is a greater temperature than T1. On the y-axis, we have probability, and on the x-axis, we have energy. If we look at the curve T1, which is red, we can see that the probability is shifted to the left, lower than the activation energy mostly, whereas T2 in the blue, which is our higher temperature, is shifted more to the right, which is higher than our Ea. Remember that Ea is the minimum energy essentially to kickstart a reaction. If a collision occurs, but it doesn't occur with a great enough energy to exceed the activation energy, then no effective collision actually took place and therefore reactants cannot be formed into products. The area below the curve represents the number of molecules that have a great enough kinetic energy in order to actually produce an effective collision. At the higher temperature, T2, the probability curve is mostly shifted where there's a greater number of molecules or a greater area under the curve that exceeds the activation energy E sub A. Whereas the red curve or the lower temperature T1, there is a lesser area under the curve that represents the molecules with enough energy to actually react. So at a higher temperature, you have a greater amount of kinetic energy in your system and you have more molecules that can actually exceed that threshold energy, which is the activation energy, and have enough energy to have an effective collision. The greater number of effective collisions there are, the greater the rate of the reaction will be. The rate constant is also related to the temperature of a reaction. Rate constants are only constant at a specific temperature. So if you run a reaction at any different temperature, you have to recalculate the new rate constant. We've learned that the rate constant value can tell you something about the rate of the reaction. A small value for K corresponds to a slow reaction, while a large value for K corresponds to a fast reaction. Since slower reactions take place at lower temperatures, they're also going to correspond to lower values for the rate constant. And faster reactions take place at higher temperatures, so they're going to correspond to larger values for the rate constant. In general, the rate constant K will increase exponentially as the temperature of the reaction increases. Mathematically, we can relate the rate constant to the temperature of a reaction by using something known as the Arrhenius equation. The Arrhenius equation says that K equals a times e raised to the negative ea over rt. This form of the equation is not commonly used. Instead, the logarithmic form is the more commonly used form of the Arrhenius equation, which says the natural log of k is equal to negative ea over r times 1 over t plus the ln of a, where lowercase k is our rate constant the units of the rate constant change depending upon the order, so don't worry about those too much. R is the universal gas constant. R has a value of 8.314 joules over moles times Kelvin. Ea is our activation energy in units of joules so that it cancels with our gas law constant for R. 1 over T is capital T, so that means it's, it's temperature in units of Kelvin. In the natural log of A, A is something known as the frequency factor, or sometimes the pre-exponential factor. This contains information about the number of effective collisions or collisions with enough energy and the proper orientation. This form of the Arrhenius equation is used graphically. It's written in the form of Y equals MX plus B. So if we graph on the y-axis the natural log of k versus on the x-axis 1 over the temperature, as long as that temperature is in Kelvin, will produce a straight line with a negative slope. That negative slope is equal to the activation energy divided by r. 
if we can figure out what the equation of that line is, we can set the slope equal to EA over R, and since R is a constant value, 8.314, we can figure out what an unknown activation energy is. Let's look at an example of how you would set this up graphically in order to find an unknown activation energy. You have some temperature data in degrees Celsius, and you have the rate law constant K. In order to use our Arrhenius equation, we have to convert our temperature into Kelvin, and we have to take the ln of our rate constant K. Once we convert our temperature into Kelvin, we actually have to take one over the temperature in order to plot that. So we're gonna make a graph using Excel, and on the x-axis, we put one over the temperature in units of one over Kelvin, and we plot the ln of the rate constant. We should expect to see a straight line with a negative slope. We can get the equation for the line in y equals mx plus b form, and what we're interested in is the slope, or m. When we graph the natural log of k versus 1 over temperature, we get a straight line with a negative slope. That negative slope is equal to negative Ea over R. This comes from the logarithmic form of the Arrhenius equation, which is our m term. If we figure out what the equation of the line is, we can take the value for the slope and set it equal to negative Ea over R. So from this graph, the equation of the line was negative 22,254, and we'll set that equal to negative Ea divided by our gas constant R, which has a value of 8.314. So essentially, our two negative values cancel each other out and become positive in this case. Our activation energy should be a positive value when we calculate it. So our Ea comes out to being 1.85 times 10 to the fifth joules, or 185 kilojoules if we divide by 1,000. So in order to figure out your activation energy graphically, you would use this logarithmic form of the Arrhenius equation and set the appropriate x and y axes. You would have to know temperature data and data of the rate constants at those temperatures figure out the slope of your line, and set that equal to negative Ea over R. Since it would be a pain in the butt to have to actually graph every time we want to figure out the activation energy, we can use a point-slope form or a two-point form of the Arrhenius equation in order to figure out our activation energy. This says that the natural log of K2 over K1 is equal to negative Ea over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. We just have to make sure that when we plug in our temperatures into this equation that they have the units of Kelvin. The reaction 2NO2 forming 2NO plus O2 has an activation energy of 111 kilojoules per mole. At 385 degrees Celsius, the rate constant equals 4.9, 1 over molarity times seconds. What is the value of the rate constant at 465 degrees Celsius? So we're going to use our two-point form of the Arrhenius equation because we know our activation energy and we know two temperatures and one rate constant. It doesn't matter what we call T1 and T2 or K1 and K2 as long as we're consistent and keep the appropriate temperature with the appropriate rate constant. So our Ea is equal to 111 kilojoules per mole. Our R value is equal to 8.314 joules over moles times Kelvin. So if we convert our Ea into units of joules per mole, that would be 111,000 joules per mole. We can say that our T1 is equal to 385 degrees Celsius, which is 658 Kelvin if we add 273. Our T2 can be the 465 degrees Celsius, which that corresponds to 738 Kelvin. 
And our 4.9 1 over molarity times seconds K would be our K1 because that would correspond to our temperature of 658 Kelvin. So we have to make sure to keep those two together. So listing that out, we have K1 equals 4.9, 1 over molarity times seconds. T1 equals our 658 Kelvin. K2 is what we're trying to figure out. And T2 is equal to 738 Kelvin. So we're going to use our Arrhenius equation. We're going to have the natural log of K2 over K1 is equal to negative EA over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. So we have the ln of K2, which is what we're trying to find, divided by K1, which is 4.9, equals negative our EA is 111,000 divided by R is 8.314 times 1 over T2, which is 738 Kelvin, minus 1 over T1, which is 658 Kelvin. So now that we have everything in the correct spot, we can actually figure out what this value is on the right-hand side of the equation. So our ln of K2 over K1, which was 4.9, is equal to 2.199. And if we move over here, we can undo our natural log by taking E to both sides. So K2 over 4.9 will equal E raised to the 2.199 power, which that gives us 9.016. So then to solve for K2, we have to get a, that 4.9 out of the denominator, so we'll multiply both sides by that. We'll have 4.9 times 9.016, and our K2 comes out to 44.2. And the units will be the same as the units on the other rate constant because the order of the reaction wouldn't change. So 1 over molarity times seconds. Calculate the activation energy for the reaction. Dinitrogen pentoxide forming 2 nitrogen dioxide and 1 half oxygen. The observed rate constants are K equals 3.46 times 10 to the minus fifth inverse seconds at 25 C and K equals 1.5 times 10 to the negative third inverse seconds at 55 degrees Celsius. So here we have our K value at a certain temperature. Our 25 C would be the same as 298 Kelvin. And so we can call that our T1 and then this would be our K1 that corresponds to that. Our other K then would be our K2 at 55 degrees Celsius, which is also 328 Kelvin, and that would be our T2 value. So in this case, we're trying to find the activation energy, which is the E sub A for the reaction. So using our two-point form of the Arrhenius equation, we'll have the natural log of K2 over K1 equals negative EA over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Plugging in, we'll have ln. Our K2 was 1.5 times 10 to the negative third. Our K1 was 3.46 times 10 to the negative fifth. That equals negative EA over our R value, 8.314, times 1 over our T2 value, which our T2 was 328 Kelvin, minus 1 over T1, which was 298 Kelvin. 
So we can figure out what the ln of that fraction is on the left-hand side of the equation. And that comes out to 3.7694. And we take the ln of that fraction. And that will equal negative EA over our R value, 8.314. And we can figure out what the value is for our difference in our temperatures here. And that should come out to being negative 3.069 times 10 to the negative fourth. And so now we want to isolate our activation energy, E sub A, so we can divide both sides of the equation by negative 3.069 times 10 to the minus fourth. It'll cancel on the right-hand side, and we'll move it over to the left. And that will end up giving us negative 1.228 times 10 to the fourth power. And that negative value is equal to negative EA over 8.314. And so the two negative values essentially cancel each other out. We'll end up with a positive value for EA. EA will be equal to 1.228 times 10 to the fourth power times 8.314. And our activation energy comes out to being 1.02 times 10 to the fifth joules, or if we divide by 1,000, we'll have 102 kilojoules.